Hey folks, Roland Martin here and welcome to my YouTube channel. Have you ever thought about catching a really big fish? I mean a big trophy fish and just what would you do about it? Well, you know, almost every night before I go fishing, I think about that. I, th I always think about trying to catch a really big fish and what I would do about catching a really big fish. Let me just tell you a story. When I was 17 years old and a senior in high school, I went fishing once on the eastern shore of Maryland. I took a head and crazy crawler and I ran it through the lily pads and whammo, I caught a bass about seven pounds. Well, I took it to the Beltsville Sports Center and they were having a fishing tournament, a fishing contest for the big fish of the year. And here I am, just a little high school kid. I enter the bass and sure enough, it wins the prize for the year, the biggest fish caught in that little local sporting goods store for the whole entire year. So all the locals are saying, hey, that guy must be a pretty good fisherman. He, he caught a big bass. Well, I won a trolling motor. That's what was my prize. Well, that was really good. So now I'm thinking about big fish. Now, it's a year later. I'm starting college. And I go up to the Tri-Delphia Reservoir, and I take a big plastic worm. I throw it out on the edge of this bar. I catch this giant smallmouth. It's six pounds, five ounces. It's the biggest smallmouth just about I've ever caught in my whole life. I took it into my college. Uh, biology professor and he aged it at 17 years old and gave it an official weight and I also took it to a, another sporting goods store that was giving another prize and it was the uh, I forgot what the sporting goods store was and I won another big prize it was a bunch of lures and a big trophy and all of a sudden everybody's saying hey you know Roland is really ca catching some big fish he's caught a monster smallmouth he's caught a, a monster largemouth and so it kind of really got me going. Everybody thought I was a, probably a better fisherman than I really was just from the fact that I caught some big, big record fish. So, th so that got me started on record fish. And you know, over the years, I've fished with some guys that have caught world record fish. So for example, I just gotta show you something. This is the, uh, the IGFA world record of game fish. It's the International Game Fish Association's world record catches for all the different fish in the world. I'm looking it up uh, under bass, for example. Now, they, there's all kind of other fish in here. There's, there's muskies, and there's peacock bass, and there's salmon, and there's amberjacks, and oh, there's all the saltwater fish, and there's, there's every kind of fish in the world. And not only are they just the world record size fish, but there's also the, all the line classes for each, each fish. So it's kind of cool. I know a lot of friends that like to, like to enter the, uh, the different line class divisions, and they try to, say catch the biggest fish on two pound line, this catch the biggest fish on four pound line. And so this is a big, a big contest for a lot of anglers. So here's, here's a guy that I know, his name is Bob Krupe, and out of Castaic Lake, look, he caught a 14 pound bass on, on, a, on two pound test line. And then uh, at the end he caught a, 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 another bass that was 17 pounds, he caught it on four pound test line. Bob Krupe went along to, uh, Oscar Steak and he caught, Robert Krupe caught a 21-pound bass. It was the biggest one uh, forever, or 12-pound, like 21-pound bass, Robert Krupe. And then just uh, shortly after, on, on a, he caught a 20-pound bass, on 20-pound test line, he caught a 20-pound, a well, let's see, a 19-pound, what did he catch? Okay, here's another one. He caught a 22-pound bass. Robert Krupe caught a 22-pound bass, just a couple ounces short of the world record. Now, I contacted Robert Krupe because I looked up in the IGFA book. By the way, I'm a uh, Hall of Fame member of this organization. It's really kind of cool. They, uh, they document all the, all, the, all the world record fish of the world. And, and I was one of the first inductees on the, uh, on the freshwater category, myself and Ray Scott and a couple of us. But anyway, I, I looked up Bob Krupe and I went out to California. And we went out to Castaic Lake where he'd caught these four big world record fish out of these different line classes. And he put me on a crawfish and I threw it out in this deep water and whammo, all of a sudden I catch a, uh, I catch, I catch a, a 10 pound bass. I caught a 10 pound bass. That was really, really the, the biggest bass I'd caught in California up to that point. Anyway, uh, Krupe has, has, has caught a lot of big fish. Now here's another guy that's in that same category I met when I was out in California. And his name is Dan Cadota. Dan Cadota is right here. He's uh, where I can find it. Dan Cadota. He caught a a 19-pound bass on 20 on 20-pound line. Anyway, I've, I've I've met some of these guys. I met uh, another guy. Uh, anyway, 
you don't win a lot of money in, in the IGFA deal, but it is kind of a really kind of a fun thing to, to have line class records. Now, but you can win money and you can win prizes over and above what, what say this IGFA does. Now let me take, take it, uh, go another step. Let me tell you about the Florida Trophy Bass Catch. Okay, folks. You know, there's another really, really great way of, catch, of having prizes and money and really neat uh, trophies, and that's the Florida Trophy Bass Catch. Now, what the Florida Trophy Bass Catch is, and I'll just show you right now, it's just, uh, I just register for it. It's, it's the state of Florida's official uh, trophy bass catch. And what you do, you register with the state, and there's a bunch of rules and regulations. It's so cool. Uh, and, and when you get the thing properly documented and get pictures of, of the fish that's on the scale, and there's a whole bunch of requirements on how you want to take the pictures, and you got to get somebody to kind of a, a, t a test, and you got to sign a little document that, uh, that's all truthful. And you have to have it documented with photographs and possibly even a, 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 some kind of film work. And then you, they want you to show how it's being released. So the trophy bass catch is dealing with catch and release. Okay, so what, what the end result is, is the people that catch a bass on the Florida trophy bass catch over eight pounds, they get some really special prizes. Bass Pro Shop, for example, uh, at least for, uh, they were given $100 worth of, of, of uh, prizes and lures and, and a bunch of things. Plus for the state of Florida, gives you a nice big plaque and it's, it's, a, it's a, an official document that says, you know, you've, you've caught and released this eight pound trophy bass. And so that's really a big deal. A lot of people are going into Florida trophy bass catch and it's, it's just really a worthwhile thing. Now, let me go one step farther. Just, just say I'm down here in Florida and I catch a 23 pound largemouth bass. Now that's a world record, okay? Now, Ray Scott always said that, you know, if you play your cards right, Ray Scott was the, the president of the Bass Angler Sportsman Society for years, and, and he always had an idea that if you caught the world record bass, say 23 pounds, that you would have, uh, could be possibly a, a worth up to a million dollars. Now, he was saying what you'd have to do is get a lawyer and have a lawyer kind of a, a make up a contract that before you ever announce what you lure you caught it on, I work, I work for a Yamamoto Bait Company, and so of course I'd, I'd be using, say, a Cinco. But say if you didn't work for a bait company and say you just were using a Cinco, what, what you'd want to do is have a contract in place and you'd go to the people at, 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 at Yamamoto and say, listen, I've caught this world record bass. What's it worth to you for me to divulge this information to the press and to the public and we'll make a big advertisement campaign out of it. So that's one thing. Again, you have a boat to consider, you have a motor, you have all the rods and reels to consider. So if you parlayed all this, this thing with contracts, you could possibly you know, make quite a bit of money. But, uh, but really, to have an official state record or official world record, there's something that you have to do over and above the trophy bass catch and over and above the, uh, the IGFA rules and regulations. Both of those organizations say you need a, a photograph and you need a, a good certified scale and you need pictures of it, but that's not good enough for actual official world record. For an official world record, there's only one way to do it. And that is you have to have the state that you're in, the state of California, the state of Florida, the state of whatever, to document that catch. In other words, if I had a 23-pound bass, I'd go on the phone, call up the local game warden or the Fish and Game Commission here in Florida, and try to keep the fish alive and say, listen, I think I have a world record fish. I want to document it. And that's what gives you the official world's record. Now, these other organizations, like the Trophy Bass Catch, it's not the official. It's, a, it's an unofficial. It's, a, it's not as official as can be. You know, it's funny, George Perry is credited for the world record bass, 22 pounds and four ounces, caught in 1932 in Montgomery Lakes, Georgia. Now I met George Perry when we took a big tour when I was working in 1970 with the Bass Anglers Sportsman Society. We did, did a seminar up in Macon, Georgia. 
And Ray Scott got a hold of George Perry. He was running an, air, uh, an airport down in, in South Georgia, and he was still alive at the time. He came up and actually talked about how he caught that world record bass. But he didn't get any money for it. There are pictures on, uh, that he did catch holding this 22-pound, four-ounce bass. But at the time, they didn't have any way to document anything. They had nothing but uh, just some guy at a, a local scale and somebody else that testified and said, yeah, that's what it weighed on the, the grocery scale. But that's not good enough in today's standards. What George Perry did was back then in 1932 was one thing. But what you have to do today is different because today you have to have it documented. There's too many people running around with mercury and ways to cheat and, things, and making up stories and things like that. So now they have a world record you need to have it documented. Call up the fish and game department of your state. Say, listen, I think I have a possible record. I want you to certify it. It's as simple as that. But anyway, in the meantime, if whether you catch a world record or not, it's sure fun trying to catch a big fish. You know, I, when I go to bed at night, I just, I just dream about monster bass. In fact, when I was guiding at Santee Cooper, the whole deal that I had at the time was I tried to guarantee eight pound bass. I didn't often catch an eight pound bass, but I, I would try to always talk about it. I said, I think we can catch an eight pound bass. That's our goal, eight pound bass. And even today, when I fish, I guide at the uh, Headwaters Ponds. I guide up in central part of Florida. I guide on Lake Okeechobee. I still say to this day, so 50 years later from the time that I was guiding at Santee, I'm saying, let's, let's, our goal is an eight pound bass. That's really, really, really big. And that's also the goal of the Florida Trophy Bass Catch. You catch an eight pound bass and you get all those prizes from Bass Pro Shop and lures and you get a, a wonderful trophy. So that's, that's still my goal. So after 50 years or so of hard fishing, I still have the same goal. Each and every cast, I want to catch that big trophy bass, that big eight pound fish or better. In fact, I'd like to catch the world record. Well, that's my story. That's what I want to do. But I also told you what you need to do and what you want to do. If you do catch a really big fish, the avenues that you can go. Listen, I ho hope you enjoyed my YouTube channel. I really enjoy doing them. And uh, thanks for subscribing. Uh, I, I got about almost 150,000 subscribers now, and I'm, I'm so happy. My advertisers are so happy. I just love doing this. I'm the old school teacher at art. You know how I am. Anyway, I'll, I'll tell you all that I know. Try to pass it on. We'll see you again soon, and hey, thanks for watching.